Good morning. Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. This is episode 64. How about Big Red Mug? <laughs> and I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. It is 7 a.m. Oh, should I make up a date? It's Sunday morning. But what is the number? I don't know. August 18th. There we go. That works for me. And we went up to Maine yesterday to visit with my in-laws and had a, we left at seven in the morning and got home at almost 11 last night. So it was a very long day and very fun day. We had a really nice time seeing everyone. Um, my brother-in-law and his wife came up from DC and the one I knit the mug sweater for. And, uh, just had a great time playing in the lake and just ah, it was great to see them so we don't get to see them enough anyways Linus is just off camera he's checking you out I really wish he wouldn't but he is and I know I have this like deep froggy voice going on not my typical hyper self let me get there wait let's use the magic of editing so I just chugged half of my giant coffee so I should be good you want to see my new sweater? I want to show it to you. <laughs> so the Asilomar by Amy Herzog is what I am working on and loving, 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 loving right now. So there's the front page of the pattern. Um, I did shorten the sleeves and I think that's the only modification I really am going to make. I'm knitting um, the back panel. Well, first here are the two sleeves, so those are done. They're going to be, let's see if I can just be about there on me, about there, three quarter lengths, sleeves. Um, I love this color. It is the Cascade 220 Heathers in, my flag, in uh, color 7806, or as I'm fond of calling it, lavender gray. I think that's just a gorgeous color. I love, love, love it this little uh, lace detail at the bottom of the cuff and at the hem of the body is so much fun to knit um i didn't like it at first but the more i do it the more i like it so that's great um let's see and then here's my back panel i went gangbusters friday and saturday so far so Friday morning, if I had recorded, I was right here, like still halfway through the lace. But I have been a knitting master and I am mm, probably an inch, so four rows away from breaking off for this, not breaking off, but for binding off the sleeves, holes, armholes, there we go. And this is knit on, hi Mako, knit on um, USI 7.5 millimeter needles so it goes really fast really really fast i'm so enjoying it and the gray i love the heathering it it keeps it more interesting than the flat solid colors do i'm specifically thinking about the red sweater i just finished the jackaroo that red i love red but i don't necessarily wear a lot of red and i knew i wanted a gray sweater nope my wardrobe's lacking that i have a lot of black and brown store-bought sweaters but People love gray, and it's a good staple item. So I wanted a gray sweater, but I didn't want a flat gray, and I'm so happy I picked this color because it is alive with color. So that's on my needles. Um, I'm already, yeah, and I have in my notes, I wrote them on Friday. It's going much slower than the Jackaroo, and I'm not really interested in it. I am. It picked right up. See, I just had to get through it. So I am... I bought five skeins. I've used two and a half so far. I'm not sure. I need to read ahead. I think that this lace up the front panel is included in the pattern or not an applied edging. I don't know though. I could be wrong. I'm not sure. So what I'm trying to say is that I have two and a half skeins to go to finish the back so the top I'll probably finish that skein there and then I have a skein each for the front panels and that's more than enough so I'm really glad I took my 
limited sweater knitting experience and said, I need about 1,100 yards to knit a sweater for myself. I'm not gonna follow what the pattern says and go crazy and buy eight skeins and have three left over, uh, which I find a lot of patterns are like that. And that's probably, my guess is, it's the math being done. It's not the actual, no one has actually sat and knit it and I didn't wanna search through, spend a great deal of time getting warm here a great deal of time searching through people's finished objects or have they had finished objects so from now on if I have 1100 to 1200 yards I'm just gonna jump in and do it like that's gonna be my go forward to knit like a 45 inch bust that's what I think I need for a sweater and if I don't have enough three-quarter length sleeves for all actually if I knit the sleeves first that won't work but you know I'm just gonna be a little little more brave about that so that's that's where my should we talk about what you guys are working on i am so excited to see what everybody's posting in the what's your favorite project this month thread um my cute is growing 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 so for the month of july we have this lovely skein of gail's art superwash sock yarn in the cherry blossoms colorway oh this is a if you're a spinner, you are supposed to really like this color for spinning. <laughs> I, you know, the things you pick up from podcasts that you're like, this is a useless piece of information in my world, but you hold right on to it because you learned it. Okay. Random number generator. Where did you go? You think it's in my utilities? Random number generator. Perfect. Okay. Let's see. We had in this thread page two 32 entries great so I am going to do random number generator number two through I know on air drawings are kind of annoying aren't they 32 generate okay they go you can see number 12 so We'll hop back over and look at number 12, which will be on the first page. Number 12 was Ink's Lingering. There's more to her name than that, but the pictures just got up. Ink's Linger. Slinger. Yeah. 1121. And she is working on her Christmas knitting, which is a pair of socks for her dad. So, Ink Slinger, 1121. Oh, I recognize some of her older revel, Revitars. Ah, she has Lindsay from, yeah, anyways. Okay, so Kim, shoot me a private message and I will get this off to in the mail for you. Yay! If you're interested in winning the skein of Highland Handmaids that I showed last month, please enter your current, whatever you're working on right now, into the thread that's going on. On Rath. I can't wait to see them and the prize drawing for that will be September 10th or later so I just want to let you know that you have all that time to enter drawings do you like prize drawings I do I can't help it so this past week what day was it oh let's say Sunday maybe it was Monday I was like I was sick of the sweater at that point and oh sorry to bump I was sick of the sweater and I wanted to do some, I'm putting my feet up. I know, I'm so relaxed just chilling with you guys. Um, can you tell the coffee's kicking in? <laughs> I have my socks that are going, I have the baby blanket, I have my sweater, four projects typically, four to six. And I wanted to do a shawl. And so I just clicked on the in Ravelry, the patterns, what's hot now, I love that. And the Miss Winkle came up. Here we go. And that is Martina Bem's new pattern. She had published it that day. Like, it was meant to be. It was meant to be. So I went through my stash. I caked up a bunch of my Into the World Club yarns because I wanted to use some of that. I had a skein also of um, Gnome Acres I got last, I think it was November. If I look at the Born On Day, that's what she's telling me. So last November, December time frame. And Steve helped, Steve tried to help, <laughs> and I got it down to these two. So this is Into the World, her Alondi, 
base, which is three ply superwash merino, 490 yards, very generous. And this is the Sansa colorway. So it would be fun to knit with this, right? And then this one is um, Gnome Acres. I have it written down, hold on. Gnome Sparkle, Gnome Fingering. She, I swear, she puts Gnome anywhere she can find it. Um, it was funny. So this is Gnome on Fire. So relating to the Hunger Games, the new movie's coming out in November. By the time I finish this shawl, it'll probably be November. So I was, I was excited about using this in the sparkle. You know, I just did the Sparkle Hitchhiker. I kind of like that. I like the idea of wearing sparkly shawls to work and having my coworkers be like, what's up? <laughs> so, um, but I wasn't, I wasn't really committed to one or the other. And so I thought, well, I have two size four needles. I think the pattern calls for threes, but I decided I would use fours because that's what I had just used on the Hitchhiker and that's what I had. So I cast on the beginnings of both. And as you can see, I did two loops. How about I show it to you this side so the thing is in the way. I did two of the little edge loops with the Sansa colorway. Um, I thought that the, well, I'll just show them both to you and then you'll, you may see what I saw. And then I did a bit more with the um, gnome, gnome on fire. And my thought, my initial thought had been, oh, I'll do both and I'll do like three loops on both and I'll let them pick. It was so obvious to me that I didn't let you pick and I kept going because it is kind of addictive. I've been doing two loops a day since I cast on, except yesterday, I didn't bring it in the car. Um, I don't know, I felt like this one just came alive. Like, does that make sense? Does that seem crazy? The, um, the colorway is very vibrant. The fact that I had some striping going on, like full color stripes in the blue and the orange, I just, I don't know, it just looks so much better. I also think that this is, I'm not a spinner, but I think this is a heavier, <clears throat> well, it has to be. If they're both four ounces and one is 430 yards and the other is almost 500 yards, this has to be a heavier weight yarn. So it fills up the stitches a little thicker. It makes a denser fabric. I like that. This one I just looked at and thought, oh, it looks weak and sad. So, um, it will definitely be a shawl because it is 100% merino and I don't do socks with that kind of yarn anymore. But uh, I think it'll be knit on size threes or maybe it'll be some hand warmers. It'll be something upper body. So, but it's not going to be the Miss Winkle. So there you go. But I did want to show you because it amazed me looking at it at the difference between the two at how strong one came out and how limp and weak the other looked. But they were both, they're both gorgeous yarns. Like no one's gonna say that there's anything wrong with this yarn. It is a lovely yarn. But the, uh, just getting that pattern right is so important to pair with the yarn. So, I don't know, I thought it was a fun little exercise. So I did that. So, um, someday Sansa, you will be something gorgeous, but it's not today. <laughs> or it's not the Miss Winkle. So, um, so this is on my needles and I am mid-row. And I will probably wear it to the theaters to see The Hunger Games because, hello, this one is my favorite movie, Catching Fire, the second one out of the trilogy by the lady, I don't know her name, The Hunger Games, but the second one out of, uh, don't sit on my glasses, cat, out of the trilogy was my favorite book out of the three. So, what about you? Did you read them? Did you, what book did you like best? Tell me. I'd love to hear about it. Because I think I'm pretty unique in thinking that the second book was the best. And that's really unusual. Most, most often, I find that the first of a series is the best and then they tend to go downhill. But that second book blew my mind. So, alright, what is next on the needles? Finishing the coffee, obviously. Baby blanket. <clears throat> so, Amy's baby shower is on... September 11th and I think having a date set was the motivation I need although I haven't done anything since the date was set but it's making me nervous and it's making me think about it so September 11th I have to have this one done by and if you're knitting a baby blanket we are doing a knit along there will be a prize drawing for each baby blanket finished baby blanket picture you post in the thread one per month um, you can have up to five May, June, July, August, four. 
<laughs> four in the thread. Um, so four chances to win the prize. And I believe this month it's going to be a pattern of your choice. So finish those baby blankets if you want to get in on it. So here I am. I have, oh, I'm a little further than I thought. It's four by four mitered squares. And you can see I'm doing the violet, the lake, and the berry colorways as my four colors. I thought I was going to need more of the berry and the lake and I went to Joanne's and Michael's and neither one had any. I don't know what's going on with Cottonese, why it's not available in my big box stores. I mean, not that I need to get it there. I can place an order online, but the uh, I have to buy it in bulk. I can't get it. Well, I guess I could, but I'm not paying $17 for shipping if I'm not getting a lot of yarn. So anyways, um, Bro, what color is that? Green. Is it green yarn? Can you say yarn? Yarn. Yarn. Green yarn. Can you say that for me? Green. Green yarn. What color is that? Green. It's purple, huh? Mama! That's Mama's. That's right. Are we sharing? No. We're not sharing? I thought we were sharing. No. Oh, that's yours? Mine. Oh, it's connected. See? Okay. Mine. Da. Da. <gasps> uh oh, look. Look, it's connected. You can't pull too much. What color is this right here? Green. Well, that's green. What color is that? Pink. Okay. Right. What color is this? What color is this? I think it's blue. Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Can you wave bye-bye? Bye-bye. All that to say that I then came home and weighed the, the violet skein before I knit the square and then after I knit the square and I will have exactly maybe one ounce extra of this to do the, I'm planning on five squares of each. That makes 15 squares. That doesn't make 16 squares. Okay, well, maybe there's one more purple in there. I have to look at my... Do you know what I did? I wanted to have a color plan. Yeah, I clearly can't count. Two, four, six of the violet. Here's my little color plan. <laughs> that was my first attempt. I didn't like the way that would look. So here's my second attempt. Violet, pink, or blue. <laughs> so there, the colors are going to go diagonal across. But anyways... So I have four out of the 16 done. Um, next week is the London trip. So not this coming week, the week after. So I'm not, this will not be going. It's, it's too big, too much. I'll probably just bring the socks and the shawl and call that good for on the plane. Um, which makes me think maybe I should finish my socks on the line. Okay. Because I don't have enough left. To bring them. Maybe I'll start a new pair and that'll be my London socks. But anyway, so here I am. Yay! Starting the fifth square, which will be a blue if I'm thinking this through correctly. So this is Cottonese. It is the Cousins Mitered Square Baby Blanket by Emily Payne. Um, I'm using cotton, Cottonese, which is a 50 50 cotton acrylic blend. My favorite baby blanket yarn. And US 8's 5mm needles. So that's how that's going. It's coming. It's coming. And this is my bird legs bag. Bag. You've seen it before, but I love it. It's so huge. I have like six skeins of yarn in here, plus a baby blanket. Um, yeah. And it has my little, my little raccoon. Isn't he cute? For camping. So, not that I'm big on camping, but my parents have a motor home and they got us a tent so we're supposed to go with them. We'll see if that works out. <laughs> it's not really my thing. It was when I was 10, but I'm older now. So, Neural Handshake socks. These are the Neural Handshake socks. That's what I'm calling them. Um, in the Inspiration Dye Works Fluffy Plus yarn. Extreme close-up of the Linus. And you will be very pleased to see my progress. I think you'll be proud of me. So this is the first one. Sorry, no sock blockers. I have turned the heel and I'm starting up the leg. I'm like eight rows up the leg. So there you go. Is that neon green, not mind popping? I love it. I 
absolutely love that green so super fun to knit um what can i tell you it's my new version of the perfect sock for me so i am doing a three by two rib instead of a two by two rib and we'll see how it goes right so there's the first sock the second sock i am oh about an inch away from starting my um gusset increases so there you go that's how it looks just plain isn't it gorgeous i love it I'm completely in love with it the um i am doing so i'm doing my three by two and the way it works out is i start with two pearls at the beginning of the row and i didn't like starting with pearls my brain wants me to start with knit stitches so I shifted three stitches from the back to the front to keep it in the same uh, ribbing sequence. Stuck a stitch marker to remind me that the two pearls are really the start of my row, but I have my three knit stitches at the beginning. And when I start doing the gusset increases, I'll slide them back to the back side and then deal with, for those, I don't know, two inches of knitting, deal with having pearls at the start of the row. But in the meantime, all of this knitting was done with knits at the start, like I'm used to. So. Just something I thought of that might be interesting to you. So, and the Fluffy Plus is an 80-20 merino nylon yarn. Speaking of the Fluffy Plus, hey ladies, thanks so much. Um, so happy to see how many skeins of the Knitting Samurai Plus One colorway have sold from Inspiration Dye Works. Right now, the basic sock is still available if you're interested in grabbing a skein and doing the knit along in September. The basic sock is a... No, 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 no. You like the music? Is a 75-25 four-ply merino nylon. Um, I'm, what I'm holding in my hand is the two-ply. So the four-ply will wear. Probably wear it better. It'll be a sturdier sock yarn if you ask me. That would be my opinion of it. So, if you would like to go over to the Inspiration Dye Works website, Etsy shop, and pre-order your skein, they should be mailing by the end of the month, and she will, no, they should be mailing by the end of the month. If you're international, Laura has given us a deal on that, so thank you very much, Laura. If you're international, this is your chance. <laughs> and um, the knit along is going to run from September 15th to October 31st. So there you go. So you know for the knit along, we're going to, you guys might knit socks, but I was thinking I, okay, I'm, I have a few skeins of the yarn, so I'm probably going to knit several things. And I'm really excited. I love this color. It's the, totally the patch color. I love it. Anyway, um, so I wanted some ideas for non-traditional sock knitting, something to use self-striping yarn with, fingering weight self-striping yarn, but not socks or not the standard, like you just saw my normal handshake. I wanted to do something different. So, I did some research and I'm gonna share some things with you. So here are some ideas of um, things to knit. The first one I came across was the Seamless Salama Slippers by Megan Williams. That's what it looks like. So I'm guessing those are doesn't use a lot of yarn. I didn't really read the pattern, to be honest. I just thought, hey, those slippers are really cute. They're popular right now. That's one thought. Um, next, I thought of the Elefante by Susan B. Anderson. So that is a really cute little toy pattern. Um, and these will all be linked in the show notes. So don't worry about racing around to try and to get it. Um, yeah, so the Elefante would be really cute and striped yarn, obviously, but also any toy, any toy, even if it's written for worsted weight yarn, you just knit a smaller version of it using the fingering weight yarn. So that might be something I need to do. Um, I have spoke about the Emily Locke Vanilla Bean Socks. I just wanted to show you a pair that are on her website. I hope this paper isn't shiny. That's purposely why I didn't want to deal with the iPad and trying to have all the links, so I printed them out. But the um, Vanilla Bean Socks have that awesome slip stitch, so it kind of blends the stripes together a slight bit. I think that would be really cool with the teal, the aqua, whatever color you want to call that. I think it would look really neat. So that's one idea. Also, um, in my pattern searching around, I did see that West Knits is doing another mystery knit along, and his starts, let me read my notes here, 
September 13th. So I, I don't know. Um, it's called color craving or something. Something about color. I don't know if striped yarn would work for it, but um, it might be fun to try. And if it does work, you could double dip. That's two knit alongs. Oh, you'd be talking about your project everywhere all the time. <laughs> um, the V Well by Susan Berg is a shawl. I'm not sure if our stripe segments will be large enough for it to, like, I don't know how it would look up here on the top, but I think this is a pretty neat pattern. So it's in my queue. So if you want to do a shawl. And then, of course, baby knitting is awesome. Oh, my God. Who? What a cutie pie. So this is are the Baby Leg Warmers by Mila. Um, and that little girl is just the cutest little thing. Look at those tiny, tiny legs. Ooh. Yeah. So they might be a nice gift to pair with your baby blanket knitting. I thought of that. And then the Norwegian Sweet Baby Cap by Grow. Oh, oh does anybody recognize that punam? <laughs> He looks so goofy in this picture. So this is mine that I knit with uh, Jitterbug. Calling it Jitterbug yarn, I want to say. It's that two-ply base, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I knit that for him while I was pregnant. And he wore it a handful of times. Not a lot, because his, his head was pretty big. But it would be super cute in self-striping yarn. So this is definitely one I'm going to knit. Just, I can't not knit this. Anyways, he's good. He's good this week. He had a lot of fun jumping in the lake with Aunt Ryan. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I told you guys. Sorry, side note here. But one of his favorite things right now is telling you that, like, he'll go to eat something and be, like, hot. You're like, okay. He says, no, hot. Hot. No, hot. Like, it's really hot. <laughs> very cute and he'll do it like 10 times and you're like i get it it's hot don't eat it blow on it so then he blows on it but he does that with hot he does that with um trucks and like sometimes he'll you he'll see a plane call it a tractor and then say no plane plane no plane <laughs> it's very funny so and oh i i don't know if i told you guys so we he went to his new daycare maybe that's what i'll do five days Five days full time there we're there um monday i went down i called down at 11 to check on him i went down at 12 30 to peek into the room or maybe it's 1 30 to peek in and see him sleeping and they put him by the door to the room so i could see okay tuesday and i thought about him like a hundred times on monday i could not settle down um i was just worried my little guy new environment different kids how's he gonna handle it tuesday i didn't think about him until one o'clock which was great and he was fine. Wednesday was fine, uneventful. Thursday at 9 a.m. I got a phone call. Roland fell. He fell the week before too. He fell this week, different daycare. Fell, hit his chin. And um, we think his tooth is, there's something very wrong with his lower canine. It's like a racing down there. Sure enough, that tooth is like so wobbly. There's, sorry, blood. It's just, it's a mess. And I'm like, oh my God. So they've got him eating a popsicle, like sitting quietly, eating a popsicle. He sees me. Of course, he freaks out, wants to come be with me. I'm like, okay, I have to go call your doctor. And so I leave him, which was just it wasn't a good thing to do, to go down there. And it was like leaving all over again in the morning. So I leave. I go call the doctor. Doctor says, call the dentist. I call my dentist because at <clears throat> 18 months old, well, no, he's not 18. He's almost two. Uh, okay, so he hasn't been to a dentist. So I call my dentist and the receptionist tells me that bring him in we'll pull the tooth I'm like no he's two I don't want his tooth pulled at two and so I hang up the phone and one of my coworkers is like Steph call the pediatric dentist so I call the pediatric dentist she says come in we'll do an emergency visit come in right now so we go in awesome 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 so we have a checkup in January for his teeth and the result of it was that he is eating a very soft almost liquidy diet the tooth is um he nicked the bottom so it might get darker there might get some blood in it and then it might the tooth itself might get darker than um the pristine white that it is now but he didn't lose it didn't need to be pulled it's not gonna fall out if we can keep it from getting any more damage by eating soft food we should be fine so i feel so much better about that who cares if his lower canine is a little darker i don't care i don't care i just we didn't lose a tooth 
So, and then Friday, he had a normal day again. So, <laughs> yeah, and Thursday, um, we drove to the dentist. Oh, some Canadian geese are flying by outside. I don't know if you can hear them. We drove to the dentist, took like two hours, go downtown Portsmouth, take him to the dentist, get in the car, drive back. Like parking downtown Portsmouth is a nightmare. That's why I said that. But drive back to work, drop him off. He eats his lunch. Like we picked out food and got it so it was all nice and soft for him. They are so helpful there. Oh my God, the, the ladies at the daycare. Um, he had his lunch, I had my lunch. We carried about our normal afternoon. It was such a relief because at his current daycare or at his old daycare, it would be a half an hour commute to get to him, another 20 minutes to the dentist, 20 minutes back, an hour to work. Like I couldn't have gone back to work. So it's just so convenient. So that's a row update. Okay, sorry, sorry. And if you didn't want to hear about Roland, I'm sorry, but he's my boy and it was really stressful. You could, I'm sure you could see it in me last week that I was freaking out about that. So, um, Going back, okay, so another option for self-striping yarn <laughs> are the Stripes Alive by Michelle Hunter. I really like the way that the, um, I'm going to assume they're knit two together or um, slip slip knits cause the yarn to make the V shapes, but it also looks like it has a bit of purling. Oh, and did I say these are all free patterns on Ravelry? That was one of my criteria was making sure that it was a free option. So this is also, if you want to do socks, but do something a little different than the regular, um, the Byzantine, Byzantine mitts by La Mason Rulelli are also a good choice. I really, I'm, I'm probably going to do these heads up. <laughs> I really like. I like fingering weight um, mitts and I've knit in the last year, I think I've knit three pairs and I've given them all away. So I'd like to knit a pair for me and what better yarn to use than knitting samurai yarn. Okay, these leg warmers are the, called the Rejoice by Veronica Job. I am in love with these. I don't really think they would be great with self-striping yarn. They might be okay. I put them more in as a um, inspiration or you know you could do leg warmers you don't necessarily have to do socks with the yarn um, these have a beautiful cable on them I love all the buttons going up the side I just think I need to make these two <laughs> can you tell I got really excited looking around oh and then lastly okay this is the best idea best idea are you ready if you were like oh those are all fine no this is the one this no this this no this <laughs> This is the Prisma Loop by Cloudhouse Studios. Free pattern. It is a, basically an infinity shawl. I don't think I'm giving anything away if I said that I searched for Kitchener when I looked for infinity shawl and this came up. So I'm thinking it's knit like a scarf back and forth and then you seam the ends together. I think this will be gorgeous in self-striping. I'm not sure if I probably would add in another color, maybe a solid navy, dark, dark navy for where the gray is because you do have this gray edging and then the stripes of gray in between. I'm not sure, might not. I might um, just go straight with this and then I think I have some blue yarn that's very similar to do the edging. Maybe that's what I'll do, I don't know. But this, I need this, I need it, this, no this. So there you go, those are my ideas. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to open a thread on Ravelry. If you have any great ideas besides um, a self-striping sock, go ahead, throw them in there. I would love to get some chatter going over the next two weeks. Yeah, until, no, no, two weeks until we get our yarn. But then like three weeks until the knit along, no, no, three and a half weeks until the knit along starts. Um, yeah, oh, so exciting. Uh. So I hope you have a great 10 days or so until I see you again. Let me just think, 10 days would put me smack dab in the middle of when I'm in London. Maybe I'll record while I'm there. I might be lonely, we'll see. <laughs> I hope you have a, yeah, great time knitting and okay, <laughs> that's it, go.